The countdown to the next version of Android starts now. The first public beta release of Android Q is upon us, and that means it's our first proper look at what will eventually become Android 10. We already covered some of this in our early look at a leaked alpha build of Q, but in the public beta things are a bit more fleshed out, and it's easy to see where Google is headed with this new version of the OS. Take a sec to subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll jump into our first official look at Android Q. Before we begin, it's worth underscoring that everything we see here is part of a very unfinished pre-release version of Android Q. So things can and will change between now and the late summer final release. Previous Android versions have changed a lot over the course of their beta programs, and this is just the first of six Q preview builds that we'll see before the launch. So first off, privacy is a big theme in Android Q. Q has a completely redesigned permission management system that's centered around the new privacy menu in the settings app, which is a central location to manage everything to do with permissions, locations, passwords, and other sensitive data. It's easy to drill down and see which permissions are available to each app. The way Android handles location permissions has also changed. The first time an app asks you for your location, you can choose to grant it only while the app is open or at any time in the background. And you can toggle between these three options in the new privacy center as well. Worth mentioning that the persistent message when an app is using location in the background, which we saw in the Q Alpha build a couple months ago, doesn't appear to be enabled in Q Beta 1. There are also new permissions for activity recognition in apps to make this easier to see, as well as a new permission around photo and video access to let you give apps access to your gallery without opening up the whole of your internal storage. To prevent apps from taking over your screen unexpectedly, Google is also stopping apps from launching activities while they're in the background. Instead, they'll be able to use a new type of full screen notification for things like incoming calls or other very important alerts. Speaking of notifications, Google is now subtly calling out apps that get a little trigger happy with alerts. The app information pane now shows you how frequently an app is sending you notifications, and you can even dig further and view this information by notification channel. And when you hear a notification chime, this handy new bell icon will tell you which specific notification just pinged your phone. The notification shade itself is also getting a bit smarter in Android Q. To prevent accidental swipes away, you can now only swipe right to dismiss notifications. Swiping left lets you access notification settings and snooze options that were introduced a couple of versions ago. And if you enable the option to show battery percentage in your status bar, then the quick settings area will then show your estimated remaining battery life up top. To help cut down on battery anxiety as well, Android Q introduces the ability to turn on battery saver mode automatically based on your usage patterns. That means it'll kick in by itself if it looks like you might not make it to the end of the day on the battery charge that you have remaining. Thanks to the App Slices feature introduced in Android Pie, Android Q can now allow apps to show contextually relevant bits of Android settings controls when the time is right. For example, here if we're trying to browse a web page without any connection, the app could pop up a settings panel to allow you to connect to Wi-Fi. And speaking of Wi-Fi, there's a new high-performance Wi-Fi mode that developers can opt into in Q, which is great news for gamers trying to keep those ping times down. And Android Q also makes it much easier to share Wi-Fi networks that you've already connected to with a simple QR code sharing option. Much easier than trying to spell out a complicated Wi-Fi password to your friends. If you're expecting a major visual overhaul in Q, then you might be disappointed. There are quite a few smaller UI tweaks, but it's clear Google isn't thinking about overhauling the Pixel interface just yet. At first glance, the biggest change is the fact that the Google Sans font is now used through much more of the UI. It's taken over the quick settings area, as well as the system clock and some other parts of Android's notification shade. Also, Android now thoroughly blurs out album art on the lock screen when you're playing music, likely to make things a little bit easier to read, while also showing the artist and track name on the always on display. It's similar to what Google's done in the past with the now playing feature on Pixel phones. But on the whole, the most significant visual upgrade in Android Q might be something that's heavily buried in the current beta build, despite being exposed in the display settings menu in the leaked alpha build of Q we used just a couple months ago. I'm talking, of course, about Night Mode. Google has dabbled with Night Mode in some of its apps for a while, but the rumor in Q was that Google would finally opt for an OS-level Night Mode switch that affects all apps. It is there in the Q beta, but currently it needs to be enabled via the command line. So you can get your full OS level night mode fix, and it affects a lot of Google's apps, even though it doesn't quite look perfect yet. It's safe to say there's probably a lot more to come with regards to night mode in future Q releases. On a similar note, OS level theming support in Android has been a long time coming. 
It's still not quite here as a user-facing feature, but you can play around with Q's accent color and font options hidden under the developer settings menu. And you can also change the icon cutout shape, which affects all icons, by the way, not just app shortcuts in the launcher. All of this stuff is surely hidden for a good reason, though, so we'll just have to wait and see if it's officially revealed in the next few Android Q builds. Sharing in Android right now can be slow and clunky at times, so Google is reworking things a little bit in Q. There's a new faster sharing menu, and Google is changing the way sharing intents work behind the scenes. Apps can surface areas that they want stuff to be shared to ahead of time, meaning these sharing shortcuts can load instantly into the share menu. Finally, desktop mode for external displays was one of the features heavily rumored for Android Q, and it's sorta here, again, with the help of some command line jiggery pokery in the current Q beta. What's here so far is very rough, but with the help of a couple of hidden options in the developer settings menu, you can get a rudimentary Android desktop going on the Pixel 3, complete with Chrome OS style freeform windows. That said, you do need some command line magic to start it off, and the resulting UI is very rough around the edges. So Google's Pixel camera has been one of the series' main strengths, and in Android Q, the OS itself will be getting new features to support dynamic depth in photos, making it easier for apps to support changing the background or foreground blur level in, for example, portrait mode charts. Google's working with OEMs to bring this open dynamic depth format to devices shipping with Q, and I'd expect this to coincide with some new features in Google Photos around the time of the Pixel 4's launch. In case you missed it at MWC 2019, foldable phones are indeed a reality, though for now an exclusive, expensive, plasticky reality. Nevertheless, Android Q will be the first version to natively support foldables at the OS level, with new features to help with changing between folded modes and intelligently splitting the screen in half. Finally, let's round off with a few quickfire changes that don't really fit anywhere else. Dual SIM support, kinda. In Q, the Pixel 3 can use its eSIM and physical SIM slot at the same time in dual SIM, dual standby mode. That means you can't use both for calls, but you can use one for calls and texts and another for data, and that can be pretty useful for traveling. Hat tip to Owen Williams and Android Police for digging that one up. There's a new Files app, which is now skinned in Google's material theme colors, which is to say it's mostly white on white on white. Not a whole lot else to say about this one, it's a file manager, still basically works the same way it did on Pi. There's a hidden screen recording option. Enable the feature flag for this, then long press on the screenshot key to activate it. Screen record has been supported using command line magic all the way back to KitKat, but in Q there's a way to do it right on the phone, and it appears to be kinda horribly broken right now. There's also this handy undo option when you get rid of an app shortcut from the launcher, and additional haptic feedback when you're highlighting text or plugging the phone into charge. And finally, Google says that the Arch runtime, the engine that makes apps go, is faster than ever before in Android Q, so that's nice to see as well. That's going to wrap up our first proper look at Android Q. There's a lot to see, and a lot that will almost certainly change in the months running up to release. If you're using Q, hit the comments, let us know how you're getting on, and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss our continuing Q beta coverage in the months ahead. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.